A new variant Omicron was first identified by researchers in southern Africa, but they point out that doesn't necessarily mean that, the origin, uh, that it originated there. It's more an indication of the region's prowess when it comes to gene sequencing. And despite this, as you've just heard, many countries have imposed blanket travel bans. Stranded travellers, plunging stock markets, new lockdowns, call it the Omicron effect. The variant was first identified by South African researchers. Lab workers running COVID-19 tests started to find cases that didn't match known virus profiles. So they alerted virologists who studied the virus's composition by sequencing its genes. Sequencing is a tool that allows scientists to follow how a virus mutates. That means they analyze genetic material by reading its components, each one like a letter of the alphabet. South Africa has highly advanced sequencing labs, a legacy of the HIV and tuberculosis epidemics, which saw the country develop significant testing capabilities, now directed toward coronavirus research. But there's a downside. Many countries instituted travel bans on South Africa as soon as Omicron was revealed. Some say that the country is now being punished for its transparency and its research. But will such travel bans even work? When you are kind of uh, taking measure against a country, it is like uh, it is a measure against a good surveillance system. So the fact that uh, m other cases are being discovered in Europe is not unexpected. Um, it may happen in other countries. Those travel bans are still in place, however, even though the virus is known to have already traveled all over the world. And to help us dig into this a bit more, we have Professor Nick Gilbert from Edinburgh University's Institute of Genetics and Cancer. He studies DNA. Professor Gilbert, welcome to DW. So we just heard there that sequencing a virus is like reading its components. So how do you read a virus? Are you putting it under a microscope? So that's a good question, and it's something molecular biologists have been developing for many years. So the way we read the sequence of the virus is we actually need to start off by converting the viral RNA into DNA. And once we have the DNA, we use a special machine called a DNA sequencer that actually reads the individual bases that make up the composition of the virus. Right, so much more sophisticated than looking at it under a microscope then. But um, what are you able to glean from those results? So what we've really been able to do during the current pandemic is we've been able to look at the sequence of the original viral strain. And then over time, we've been able to look at how the sequence of the virus changes with time. And many people have heard the term uh, new variants. And these variants are just slight changes in the viral sequence. And it's this change in the viral sequence that then changes its properties and uh, might affect how it spreads, for example, within the population. Now, we heard a bit about it in that, that piece we just played, but why has it been South African scientists specifically that have been able to detect two variants of concern, Beta and now Omicron? So South Africa should be applauded for the sequencing technology that the country's developed over a number of years. And because it has a lot of sequencing capability, they've been very proactive in actually looking for uh, new variants. And because of this, they've actually been one of the first countries to identify them. And this is reflected in their ability both to identify the beta variant and now the Omicron variant. Why in particular South Africa, though? Why, what, what is it about South African scientists? What, what special technologies do they have? So I, I think there was a sort of decision made about 10 years ago that South Africa really wanted to be able to lead on genomic sequencing technologies, and therefore they invested a lot of money in the infrastructure and the expertise to actually be able to do this type of viral sequencing. Right. So beyond the pandemic then, what other applications are there for sequencing? 
So we use sequencing, you know, very, very widely now for understanding uh, both normal genetics and actually how the sequence uh, changes in diseases like cancer. So, for example, the institute where I work, uh, we study uh, genetics. And one of the things we're particularly interested in is actually identifying the changes in the DNA sequence that cause uh, some common genetic diseases. And one of the things people have invested a lot of time in over the last five years is being able to look at the DNA sequence of cancers to understand the changes that a normal cell needs to undergo to turn into a cancer cell. So it's a very exciting technology, and it's actually something that's been developed over the last 10, 15 years, and it's becoming really quite a sort of routine part of modern medicine. Exciting and incredibly important. Thanks very much for your work and for your time on DW, Professor Nick Gilbert, genetic scientist from Edinburgh University. Thank you.